Joining me here in Studio A for an update on economic development efforts with the City of Farmington. Warren Unsecker is here once again, the Farmington Economic Development Director, also in charge of the Outdoor Recreation Initiative. Mr. Unsecker, welcome back to KSJE. Oh, thanks so much. It's a pleasure to be here as good, always. Good to have you here. I wanted to have you come on to talk a little bit about the uh, the Downtown Art Project yes. as well into its second year, I yeah, believe. This is the second uh, year for this program, and we're very excited to see more interest than even last year. And okay. we're uh, looking forward to seeing how it grows as time goes on. So. And this is a, a city initiative Correct. and as a way to just bring new art into public spaces right. in downtown and draw more attention downtown, I think, and yeah. give folks who go downtown a chance to see some different types of art that they may not see right. elsewhere. Uh, yeah, and it's, it's really a, a sense of place and a quality of place uh, and walkability that this brings to the downtown core. Um, you know, we we launched this as a part of the uh, push to really make it an arts district of sorts, as well as a retail district. Right. And so arts and cultural district, I guess, is what exactly the, the right. state calls it, right? Exactly right. In fact, we're in the process right now of doing a uh, economic development study around arts and cultural district and its impacts and what it looks like. So okay. um, that's coming soon. So this is a big part of that is really making art more visible in the area and making it part of the DNA of downtown. And so. Um, we launched this last year to be able to uh, attract these artists. You know, we give them uh, opportunity to display their art. It is for sale, right? Um, and anyone in the community can buy these pieces of art. Um, we attract them from the four corners. So we, we went ahead and expanded that to the four states that make up the four corners. So there's okay. some from Colorado, some from Utah, some from Arizona and, and New Mexico. And so they come from all over. And we're really uh, pleased that it is representative of the art in the area. Right. And you have a juror, I guess, who maybe goes Correct. through and decides kind of yeah. what pieces may fit or what variety of pieces may fit. It? While I appreciate art, I am not an art expert. It's not you. So. Yeah, it's not okay. me. Don't and send so your letters <laughs> to Warren on Seeker's office. Well, I didn't pick them. So okay. Yeah, no, we, we, we hire a juror uh, to be able to provide their professional opinion of mm -hmm. what is good and, and uh, applicable for our art exhibit. Um, we actually got 11 pieces this year. It's two more than the previous year. Right. Um, and the city actually purchased four of the pieces from last year's tranche of art. And so um, some of those are still down there waiting to be put in their permanent locations around the city. So you actually have a little bit extra art, just as a matter nice. of fact, okay. uh, downtown right now. Um, but yeah, we have new artists and new pieces of art that have come in, and uh, it's exciting to see. And the, the very uh, variations between the types of sculpture that we're seeing has been expanded, I think, this year. Right. I wanna, we'll share some of the images on our video stream. So audiences, if you're only listening on the radio, you're missing out by not watching your screen. You can go to YouTube or Facebook to uh, see what we're talking about. Um, the one that I put first on the on the list here, Mr. Unsiger, is this uh, the big uh, bull, I think, and it, yes, the yeah. name escapes me the, yes. uh, I, at the I, moment. I, I, I w wish I knew them all by heart, but yes, yes. they, um, let's see here. That is the Free Range Longhorn. That's right. By uh, Frederick Prescott. There you go. Thank and you. So, you can't um, miss it as you're entering downtown is what I mean yes, to say as you're traveling exactly west right. on Main Street. But it it kind of nods its head at you, too. It, it he does. It a little bit. So. Yeah. <laughs> I, I saw that the first time, and, you know, it was uh, it's very eye-catching and, uh, and a, a real cool uh, location for it right yeah, there yeah. Um, as you enter kind of the downtown district. But that's just one. Uh, kind of larger than life, I yes. would say, too. These these are all kind of different sizes. Yes, and uh, And so that's important to note. Uh, you mentioned l from last year the city did purchase four pieces, mm -hmm. and I know um, – one that I know of, because it's a favorite one of mine that's still downtown, mm -hmm. is the Hummingbird yes. sculpture that I noted. And I was glad the city bought that. Yes. And it's the plan of the city then to, to maybe purchase some of these, not all of them? Uh, plan is a strong word. You know, we we okay. bought some last year. All then, right. But and, you know, when council and, and the public take a look at these again, and we, we may do a survey like we did last time to get the public's opinion of what their favorites are. Okay. Um, and then present those to council, and they can make that decision at that point. Sure, they have the final say, I'm exactly. sure. That's yeah. true. And they yeah. control the purse strings as well sure, sure but last year they did buy four and so the idea is to place these then sprinkle them throughout, throughout the, the rest of the city not necessarily yeah. downtown correct yeah not we're planning to move them around maybe put them you know in some of our parks or at like the civic center or somewhere else around town where they fit mm -hmm. um and slowly but surely we'll 
be adding to the art landscape of the entire city. And so it's a really exciting prospect as this goes on that the total inventory of public art will just rise as, as the program goes on. Right. And that is something that I think is really worth noting because, as you said, this is kind of a, a place setter, a, yeah. a, an investment in place, and I think kind of a, a uh, reflection on cultural awareness and, right. and supporting the arts in the community exactly as well. Right. All these different things. There's a lot of boxes that you check yes. by having a program like Absolutely. this. Absolutely, yeah. So, no, we're very pleased with the success of it so far. You know, we invite the artists to come for a reception beforehand, and they get to see where their art's going to be. And likewise, uh, we get to communicate with them a little more. And so far, most every artist has just been blown away with the downtown, with Farmington in general. You know, a lot of people you know don't necessarily think of Farmington and art and we're trying to change that perception. And right. so um, we have all these great artists in town, especially downtown. We've got a lot of galleries and people that are creating art, murals and, and everything True. else under the sun. So um, we're excited to add this to the landscape and really make it an attraction. And again, encourage uh, members of the community to consider, do they want to purchase one of these pieces of art? If you go downtown, you'll find little plaques with the name of the piece and the artist and a QR code that'll take you to the page where you can purchase those pieces of art. Or you can go to Farmington dot or FarmingtonNM.gov. The new slash, website. Yes, the new mm -hmm. website. Sorry, we changed it up a little bit. That's right. Slash sculptures. Okay. And you can look them up there as well. FarmingtonNM.gov slash sculptures is the is the address. And uh, the QR code, a much classier way than putting a for sale sign in each piece of art downtown. Yes, yes. But, uh, but very cool. So if someone wanted um, the... Uh, free-range Longhorn in their front yard exactly. or backyard, right. they could make an offer. <laughs> they could very well. Okay. Yes. All right. Fair enough. And the rest of them that we'll be showing yes. today too, right? Yes, absolutely. And I guess that's the point too with these artists, right, yes. is that they have a possibility of selling their art exactly and exposing right. their art to a new audience maybe that they haven't been able to do before. Precisely right. Yeah, and they're not only hitting us, uh, you know, locals here, but anyone that's driving through Farmington, coming to vacation here, they may, say, you know, take a fancy to one of those and go, I'm going to take that home with me. Right. Um, and so... Uh, um, it's just an exciting prospect for folks to be able to be a part, part of this experience as well. Right, and all different kinds. I want to yes. point that out as yes. well. Here we have a, it looks to me like a stone sculpture. Mm -hmm. Yes, correct. And uh, this artist actually has two of her pieces here uh, this time around. And Here's so, the second one. Yeah, yeah. And so, again, we, the, the range and the mediums that we're seeing are you know, getting more diverse, which is great. You know, you have your metal sculptures. You right. Know, they're moving sculptures and things like this. So it's really cool to see the, the variations we're getting. Indeed. Indeed, very, very cool. And uh, and is there a, a certain requirement, I guess, for the size of the art? Or obviously it has to be weatherproof and right. suitable for outdoor display. Correct, yeah. And, and that's really the, the biggest thing. You know, some of these, you know, we, we do have to put up on pedestals or something to make them more visible and provide them uh, safety from being tripped over and things like that. Sure. But, um, you know, we, we don't have a hard and fast size, but we do have the, the juror evaluate, is this going to be a good fit for public consumption out in the street versus, you know, in a gallery or something like that. Got so. you. Right. And that's that's important to note as as well. From, from last year, did you get any feedback on, on did the public like certain types of art as opposed to other types of art? You know, or did it like the variety that you had? The, honestly, um, if you look at the survey, a lot of them were the bronzes. Mm -hmm. um, okay. But then, of course, the, the hummingbird was another one. That's another dynamic metal sculpture. Moving. Yeah. yeah. Um, so th those are popular as well. So you've kind of got a range and, and uh, I think we have a lot more variety this year uh, in terms of the types and mediums. And so you see this metal sculpture that's more abstract and, right. and beautiful. And so, uh, but then we've got some, you know, th again, bronzes that are very dynamic and, and uh, you know, f fit the aesthetic of, of some of the things that people enjoy. And so it's. Exactly. Be great in someone's front yard. or <laughs> Right. True. Very true. This on one is uh, is called Little Cowboy, which mm -hmm. makes a lot of sense yes, when you indeed. when you see it. And so, um, but that's another one that has been uh, installed um, downtown. And I think too, um, you know, there are possible for some uh, photo opportunities uh, with your favorite. You know, as folks <laughs> are coming downtown and, and visiting. Yeah. I know the uh, the art walks are uh, mm -hmm. are real popular with folks, yes. and the Thursday evening events downtown, the Maker's mm -hmm. Mark that. Uh, and this just adds to that. You mm -hmm. know, it adds to the, the ambiance as you're going around and looking at other people's art pieces of art. You, you can feel the art uh, priority in the downtown now. Right. Um, this is, a, I think, Delilah. And, uh, again, more of an abstract uh, piece.
piece, which is kind of fun to see. And it's, a, it's one of our larger than life ones as well. Yeah, we can kind of see the scale there a little bit next to the patio table mm-hmm. and umbrella there. So yes. it's much larger than, than that. So that certainly will get your attention as you're, as you're going downtown. This one is a little bit um, yes. unique as well. Yes, yeah, so and this one's actually smaller. It's a little deceptive. Okay. But, okay. Uh, you can, if you look at the top there, there's some little trees and people that oh, they yeah. put on the top of that thing. So it's kind of a, a scale down mountainscape of sorts. So it's really neat. Gotcha. I need to take a walk down Main Street, yeah, it sounds right. like to me, to see some of these more up yeah. close than these photos. Yeah, but this, uh, one go of ahead. The kind of more found items type of thing. Recycle dark, uh, maybe, yeah, you'd yeah. say? Okay. Yeah, really cool looking thing there. Very good. And uh, and then this one? Yeah. So again, th- these are some bronzes that are a little smaller in scale. Um, they're just kind of scattered throughout the downtown. We've got three from this artist as well. So, okay. Um, you see a couple more there they tend to be kind of uh tree oriented or, or sure. uh you know metal uh sculptures so yeah and th- this is a you know one of those spinning seed pods that you see oh yeah right come down well now i see it yeah know, you right? explained it to me now i do see it <laughs> I, mean, I always thought it was kind of cool yeah, but yeah. It is. it's a fun color scheme too right and then one more i think there yeah yep. this kind of a curled up leaf as well so yeah some neat uh very good variations there so and then i think Very. one or two more is that the last one i think that's, that's the last there. one that you sent me but that's okay yeah, but you've got a uh, a card and i'll hold it up yes. here yeah. of all the uh, pieces of art i'm not a model everyone but <laughs> you you get the idea yeah. um but these cards are, are available downtown i think with mm-hmm. a nice map on the back side yeah. to kind of show you where the art is located along maine and where you can go to see and the types of uh, the names and the artists of course you mentioned that these artists are from the region right yeah. is that kind right. of the idea to keep it Somewhat regional? Yeah, exactly right. You know, we didn't go too much far afield of that, so we kept it at the four states that are the four corners, and so it kind of fits a theme, and it, it gives us a little more variety of art, art and, and, you know, options of artists in the area, and so, um, but it still keeps with the four corners and uh, the aesthetics that we like to see. So. Right, and let me bring you back to talking Please. about the addition of this art downtown, the public sure. art, the city's yeah. commitment um, to public art, yeah. and, and the economic development connections there, because yeah. I would think the one, one one drives the other, maybe the other way around too. Absolutely. So yeah, I mean, again, for me, as, uh, as I work with economic development, is quality of place and, and uh, quality of life are workforce um, efforts. They mm-hmm. you know keep people here that have uh, been here for a long time. They bring people people back, and they also attract new workforce and new people. And we saw that especially just a couple years ago when the um, the real estate boom occurred, and we had people coming from Colorado and from California and from. I mean, I've seen more diverse license plates over the last couple of years than I've ever seen New Jersey and Manhattan. I mean, just all over the place. Um, and so that's encouraging to see that we are getting a broader appeal from folks that are coming here, you know, traveling nurses and doctors and various different other um, professions that are seeing this as a, a valuable place to live. Sure. Um, and, and there could be too much of a good thing, though, I think, in some of that, right? So do, do you ever look at it a little concerned that we don't want to become another... I don't know what to compare us to, sure, but but sure. too much growth could be a bad thing if it's not managed properly, I suppose. You know, um, so far, Farmington has a, a, an immense capability of absorption and growth all at the same time. And I don't know if you've noticed, there's a lot of sticks in the air right now. Uh, between I have new noticed businesses, that, actually. You've got a new hospital being built. You've got fast food restaurants being built. You've got you know offices and various different other things that are just constantly coming up. And that's despite the current economic economics climate. Um, you've got a big bank going in downtown as right. well, the Citizens Bank. And so um, we are very resilient and also we serve such a broader market anyway. We're I guess kind of upscaled in terms of the size of our community to fit that need. That's true. We're, n- we're really not just a community of 46,000. We serve a much broader population. And so you, know, you look at Moab where they have some growing pains right now because they have too many people coming through you know, to the point where their infrastructure is failing. We wouldn't experience that same level of, of pain. It would just be you know, maybe you know, two more minutes on the road one day and then, and then it would right. dissipate. And so um, I don't think we're going to be seeing that problem anytime soon. Got Got you. I, and I understand what you're saying because Farmington can absorb that 300,000 market 
visitors yeah. on the weekends or, or whenever when they come to visit or shop or, yeah. or recreate or, or whatever it is, the city's already designed to handle that yeah. kind of influx of people and traffic and yeah, everything exactly else right. yeah. and money and everything else they yeah, want to spend exactly while they're right. here. Yeah, so that's the key. That's how it works. So I understand that makes a lot of sense. And certainly we have a major road project going on too um, yes. across Crouch Mesa, which would also help, I think, with some of that infrastructure. Absolutely. Yeah, that's going to help with the uh, flow of traffic around the community, drawing people in again from the, the you know, I, I call it suburbs, the, the outlying uh, places where people, you know, Crouch Mesa and Bloomfield and Aztec. Floor Vista. And Floor Vista, so yeah. Get to the east side, sure. Exactly right. And so, yeah, I mean, that's going to just help with the flow of traffic and, you know, spreading it out a little bit more. And so, um, yeah, we, we're always looking toward the future, too. And I will, you know, give credit to the city of Farmington where it's due. You know, I've lived several places around the country. And... Um, the proactive nature of Farmington is really, you know, inspiring. You know, we're working on, you know, upgrading water treatment plants, looking at, you know, raising dam levels and, and things to provide more water. Um, you know, various different projects that are underway to just make sure we stay as nimble and capable of handling all the things that we have at our disposal here. Right. And and I think to your point, not every community is that forward thinking. Right. And the landscape, unfortunately, is littered with some of those that have just gotten caught um, unprepared yeah. and with yeah. different economic times and and those cities have shrunk or, or even gone away in some cases right. and that's and, what you're talking about yeah and and again farmington and the four corners area were very resilient you know we, we did have a, a plant just closed down in mine sure. um you know the, there was a lot of concern that that was going to be a, a you know really a citywide impact now of course this impacted those workers you know, that's of right of course and you know not minimizing that by any means but the community seems to have you know held its own a little bit through that really hard time um, and we're just encouraged to see that and I'm you know, hopeful a lot of those folks found other jobs in the community which is a good sign again that we have that ability to absorb workforce and provide them with jobs um, got retraining and right and be up here in, in at Salmon Salmon College, College perhaps yeah. right um, sure. and, or started businesses or they you know, reinvested in the community which again it just pl plays into the fact that people really love this community and want to you know be a back to it and so it's it's really inspiring to watch right and i guess in other communities maybe that don't have some of those things maybe what would happen is they'd have to move yeah. or, or or move to somewhere else where maybe there's some family or whatever right. or wherever their job is or exactly. a job is exactly. to take that but uh, and i'm able sure to stay. some of that occurred as well sure but but you know again it is good to see that there has been um exceptions to that rule or to you know people being able to find other opportunities in the community so. right you mentioned the forward thinkingness of of, uh, of the city council, or maybe I said it, but you, you were, I think, alluding to it as well with some of these projects that are on the books. And it seems to me, too, that in this area, you find a lot of municipalities and a lot of organizations wanting to work or willing to work together yes. for a common goal. And that seems to me to be what we see, too, between whether it's the city yeah. or the three cities and one town in the, in the county and the county. Or and the school and, and the schools the school and the reservation perhaps to a certain exactly degree right. um, the Navajo Nation government yeah. uh, it seems like there's a lot more cooperative spirit here maybe than elsewhere uh, even in our state I, think. I, I can speak to it firsthand having again lived in other places and worked in economic development where I've, I've had that clamp at McCoy like drawn line literally like they, they would note like once you cross the I whatever you're in the other place and then we don't talk to those folks and, the, and so yeah you don't have that here you know, there's friendly rivalry. You know, mostly on sports, but right, you know, that's true. But, but there's there is a collaboration. There is a, a sense of pushing in the same direction and seeing the the broader uh, vision for what can be done here. Right. Do you think that opens more doors, or potentially opens more doors from funding sources like a state level or federal level? Absolutely. When they well, see that kind of yeah, cooperation. Absolutely. Yeah. No. When the feds, especially, they love seeing regionalism. That's a big thing for them is to be able to look and say, Oh, you mean you're, you're, the impact is broader than just you. You hear Farmington, it's going to hit the county, it's going to hit these other cities, it's going to cause more expansion elsewhere. Um, and two, just for businesses as well. They want to see that people are willing to cross borders from a workforce perspective. They're willing to, um, you know, they're able to find housing and they're able to find opportunities here. And so it really does, it, it builds into the appeal of the entire community and it really is a, a big uh, advantage that we have here.
Very good, very good. There are some other projects I wanted to ask you about while I had you here, sure. Mr. Unsecker, uh, some things that we've talked about before. One is a, a kind of interesting to me, really cool um, addition to the river yes. um, near the Farmington Museum um, yes. to create more of a, I guess, um, aquatic, um, I don't <laughs> know, how would you describe it? Yeah. Experience? Yeah, okay, <laughs> um, sure. So more than what's there now, yeah, for sure. We, we did a study a couple years back uh, to evaluate the options for new water features throughout the river. Uh, Mm -hmm. Endless River and San Juan um, to create a more dynamic river activity landscape for rafting, kayaking, tubing, whatever it is. Right. Already very popular, yes. but this might enhance it. Yeah, and so we identified six or so locations throughout the, uh, the riverfront, but this was kind of the keynote one that we were hoping to accomplish. And this one is a adjustable wave feature. Um, this literally will allow folks to surf in the Animus River. And surf. surf. You surf. said surf. Like surfboard. Yes. Okay. Like, I, you know, sure I heard you correctly. No, you know, no raft required. Ripping the gnar or whatever you want to call oh, it. So well, yeah, okay. they, 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 they would be able to do that. And so. Um, when conditions were right, obviously, right? Course. You have to have enough water. Well, and, and, well, and that's the thing, too, is this is adjustable to create that depending, you know, with various levels of water. Okay. Right. So, right. Got it. Um, this would be a hydraulic, you know, you know movable right. piece. And so um, that is in the process of engineering and permitting right now. And so we're really hopeful that will move forward sooner than later. Uh, we got a $2 million grant to put toward it. Um, so that made a huge dent in getting that think so. moving forward. So um, this will be, again, one of hopefully many uh, moving forward, but this was the, the one that we felt was the highest priority and, and, or the council thought was high priority, and so we're excited to see that come to fruition. So Very interesting. Now, I would think that there may be a few hoops to jump through because the – forces that be, the yes. powers that be don't just let anyone go into a river and, and add hydraulic things to it. And that's yes. what you're talking about is going through all these um, permissions and right. this is what we want to do. Here's what we Corps say we can do and, yeah, and all that, that kind of stuff, right? Stuff. Yeah, absolutely. So it does take some effort and some time to get that done, but it, it, I think it's worth the the time and energy put into it. To oh, get sure. It done, so. It'd be very unique, obviously. I don't absolutely. know of any other one in the region that I'm aware yeah. of, right? So yeah. that's part of this. And um, it would be right in front or in back of the museum along Correct. the river, in the in the river. In the river, yes. And, and it's actually about. multifaceted, too. We are added a fish ladder to allow for the natural progression of uh, spawning fish in the river. Okay. Um, and also added a diversion ditch uh, pipe to help with the uh, North Farmington Ditch area there that sometimes has log jams right behind the museum. And so um, this will help alleviate some of that. Got you. So helping some of that as well, because right. I know there's a lot of folks that rely on that, that ditch, too. Yeah, um, exactly throughout, right. Throughout so town. Multifaceted so. project. That's exciting. There's a couple other ones i think going on in that area too Correct. right that'll yeah. be a big uh, active uh, place for the next year or two yeah, or, or yeah. so um you know the the phase 1a of the gateway park master plan is underway and that's going to add a uh, market pavilion i think i mentioned that a couple times before is that uh, that's going to be a place where your, your farmers markets your craft fairs your weddings your you know dances whatever it is could be hosted in this facility um while it's not a, a truly you know fully uh, enclosed per se it has some overhead doors on the side that can close and open to allow for vendors to roll up to it and okay. just, you know bring their goods out instead of having to set up 10 by 10 tents all over and right. fight the sun and the wind and the heat and so, so a roof a covering yeah, right a It'll covering, be covered. um you know fans and things like that but um again it's something that'll be available to the public to rent and and uh, host events in and so it'll be a destination and very visible destination too right it's right there on the front of main street in the heart you know there and so um, that's an exciting addition and will really bring some attention to those events as well. And then directly behind that is also going to be a um, amphitheater, a small uh, you know, performance area that will have bermed uh, seating uh, in the landscape there. So um, that will be another venue where you could be having that um, event going on inside the market pavilion and you have a concert going on outside. And so they can get some synergy going with that. Um, we likewise have an area where food trucks and uh, right. chili roasting can park nearby too so you can really have a full featured event uh, right there along the riverfront and with that amphitheater I'm, I'm trying to visualize it I would assume maybe the river will make the backdrop of that staging area Th that's currently how it's oriented so you, you'd be sitting and, and facing the river and so um, it, it may be a far enough away that you wouldn't necessarily see it directly but you'd see the trees and the bluffs behind it and so um, it is really a, a fun addition to the venues that we have here you know we have Lions Wilderness Park and, and the amphitheater out there but this is something that'd be a little more central a little smaller 
in scale and really provide for you know, musical acts and art performances and things to that effect. So. Right, right. And the pavilion and everything else yeah. all right there in that same area. I know that that piece of property has been kind of looked at as trying to be some kind of a uh, a major park or yeah. some signature park or a gathering heard, space of sorts. Right. right. Yeah. You've got the end of 20th Street mm-hmm. kind of coming at that uh, maybe western eastern side of it, and yeah. so that's still part of the overall master plan, I guess, to yeah. have some kind of a significant city property there. Right. And so, because right now it is parking and, and dirt, and, right. and you know it's kind of underwhelming. You know, short of the, the beautiful museum that's right in the middle of it, right. All, um, it's just uh, un, un, uh, act, uh, realized Room to opportunities. Yeah. Exactly. Right. And so. So, um, again, this is a multi-phase process. It's also going to bring the river trail system along the, the front of that, along the river, and so it's going to expand that even further um, and interconnect both sides of the community, and so that's going to be a huge boon for that. Um, and then we're looking at ways that we could attract uh, more commercial development along that area because, you know, despite having three rivers, we don't really have a lot of riverfront entertainment venues, you know, you know patio restaurants or hotels or, you know, housing or anything right. else of that nature. And and so we're going to be going out to find some, uh, get feedback and, and hopefully attract a developer that might be interested in developing a small portion of that land um, and creating some of that attraction. That land by the museum is Correct. what you're talking about, which yeah. is city land or could Correct. be, yes, I guess, subdivided into mm-hmm. a private public partnership or something, yeah, whatever exactly right. comes out. And I'm a big fan of those because sure. they, you know, it gives the opportunity for the city to support something, but then you know, bless and release to the people that know how to you know, do those things and be the, the owners and keepers of that and you know, do a great job with it. So. Right. And it's certainly doable, I would think. I know there are, you know, some, certainly with the Animus, um, some potential flooding concerns. And, and like you see down by the hotels along Scott Avenue, mm-hmm. we've got the trail system there, a berm kind mm-hmm. of for, for flooding and flood control. Right and things like that, but still an opportunity to be near the river and see the river from higher um, floors on those buildings. I was going to say, well, and the thing there, too, I, I think this is a little more elevated than some of the other areas from the, town, yeah, from right. the river. Yep, yep, so, yep. yeah, that does you know, get it away from some of the more uh, dire floodplain areas and floodways. Um, and so, yeah, that, that does help as well. And But you still you have those beautiful views and you have the opportunity to really take advantage of that uh, asset that we have. Right. Very true. Very exciting. Well, those are going to be happening. Uh, and are happening already, at least parts of them. We'll probably see more visible signs. Right. What, the next six months, 12 months? What, could, what 12 would you months, predict? Yeah. Okay, mm-hmm. I'll put you on the spot for, for a moment. But uh, that's good <laughs> to know. Tentatively 12 months. Okay. Yes, but, uh, you know, our supply chains are still a little bit tenuous. And, of course, you know the cost of goods is going up every day. And so we true. just kind of have to pivot and roll with it as we can. So Sure, sure. Um, I want to just pivot back. Sure. Speaking of pivoting, back to mm-hmm. the, uh, the road project. Again, the city has yes. broken ground on its portion. Um, and I would think in your line of work, that's a major economic development driver yeah. when you add a new thoroughfare, which it will be, um, which brings residents from one area of town that couldn't easily access yeah. another area of town right yeah. into the direct shopping um major shopping area of yeah. the community it, it helps with the you know the commutes for shopping it also helps for you know just commute times for workforce you know right. they may have businesses that's taking them 20 minutes to get to work as opposed to the you know 10 it could take if they've got this cut through and so uh, that's going to make a big difference i think in that and I'll, hopefully it will catalyze uh, more housing on the other side of the river so that you know people can f- have their you know, you know more rural lifestyle but still be able to get to work and, and to the town quickly and Mm -hmm. so um, I think it has a lot of potential impacts that are going to be beneficial for the community. Right and business development I mean is that something that we should be watching for um, near or on that intersection Uh, I suppose which will soon become an even more major um, intersection in in the city and there's a lot of empty empty spots out there I think for some development that are primed for some development. I wouldn't doubt it I mean you've already seen Whataburger's bought up that uh, parcel in front of Lowe's Um, there's actually caddy corner that or retail development that's been under uh, unrealized as to date, um, but in part because waiting to see what's going to happen with this thorough for, through. So um, that could be activated by this project. And so there's a lot of things that can come to fruition as a uh, part of this project. So. Got you. I know sometimes you can't say exactly what's in the works. Well, but, you and, know. and I don't have any insight on that one, unfortunately, to, that's okay. to say whom. But um, I think that when this gets under you know full swing and is closer to completion, I think you will start to hopefully see some announcements from that group 
regroup and fingers crossed get some new opportunities there. Okay, that would be good to see. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure if you can talk about this either, but the property on Browning Parkway, where there's a, a big cement Projects. looking warehouse type thing uh, that being built, and it's yeah. uh, I think owned by a pretty major internet shopping company um, yeah. that rhymes with Slamazon. Yeah, um, and we but... have only limited knowledge of what exactly that okay. is in terms of how it's coming together. But you know that is encouraging again to see these sticks in the air and, and companies taking interest in the community. But that's a pretty major investment, isn't it, in this sure. community? Absolutely. You know. Um, Warehousing is something we don't have enough of, and if that's what it is, I mean, it it makes for better uh, access to goods, and, and uh, it also um, helps suppliers in the area. So it's good to see uh, businesses adding more warehousing, too. I've heard from a couple of different businesses in town that have said, we want to expand, we want to add more storage so we can handle all the customers we have here in Farmington. And so um, it's really encouraging to see that happening with existing businesses, too, to say, we've got more demand than we can handle. Right. Um, and it's, it's always interesting to hear from businesses that are like, you know, we're one of the top performing ones not only in the region but sometimes in the nation um, and so it's not something that people often think of when they think of Farmington but we have a really robust retail market here definitely yeah. well and one look at the city budget will tell you with those grocery receipts taxes just how robust um, it is yes. and as you said earlier there aren't that many communities of 47,000 people that can support two Walmarts and a Target and a shopping mall and Sam's all the Club. other things yeah. that we, we enjoy because of our friends and neighbors who travel here to shop. And, and you know, uh, as an economic developer, we used to kind of sn you know turn our noses up at retail because we thought saw it as just kind of diluting the market. But with a community like ours, we're drawing from outside the community, so that's outside dollars coming to Farmington that we wouldn't necessarily have unless we had the services we had to offer. Right, and I know with some of the other projects that the city has put forth, like um, Farmington Lake and mm -hmm. Bistai Bay and the golf course mm -hmm. and some of the other recreational things, the uh, the hydraulic lift in the river that we're talking mm -hmm. about, but the idea to bring people to say maybe. We're going to go to farming and to shop. Maybe we'll stay overnight. We'll take the kids to the pool. We'll exactly. take the kids to the lake. And boom, there's three more meals you've sold and, and some more um, ticket prices and what have you yeah, while they're here. Yeah, absolutely right. Yeah, no, that is the, the linchpin of what all this you know, effort is to hopefully keep people here longer, whether it's a longer stay for a vacation or coming and moving here and you know, becoming a part of the community and building into it. So, right. um, you know, and we're still kind of, you know, sitting back and looking at the uh, uh, Mormon temple that's right across the street. That's here. right. And, and, you know, what's that going to bring to the community, too, in terms of new residents, new people coming to town? And so... Um, there's just a lot going on right now, and it's really encouraging to see. Very true. A, a major uh, investment, I would say, mm -hmm. um, in the community there, and uh, and we're seeing it elsewhere, too, as you yeah. mentioned. So, very good, sir. Nice to visit with oh, you. Always a pleasure. Have you slowed down enough to come over and say hi? So I appreciate that very much, yeah, and uh, keep us posted on some of these exciting projects. Will do. All right. We'll Thanks, see you sir. on the surfboard, I guess. Yes, indeed. <laughs> All right. Warren Unsicker, thank you for being here. My thank guest you. on KSJE.